This week on Kentucky Afield, boating season is here and conservation officers are on the water. We're tagging along for an afternoon patrol. I'm off serving fish and wildlife. I'm gonna pull over next to you real quick. Next, this turkey season, we got lucky and punched both tags. We'll take a look at our first successful hunt. Then, look at that bait. We're headed to Lake Cumberland. It looks beautiful. In search of striped bass. Oh, now we got, now we got one. Uh-oh. It's all next on Kentucky Field. There we go. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> first Saint Leo. Yeah, we can't get the keeper. <laughs> here it goes. Boom! Oh! oh. Wow, that happened. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Hey, summer boating season is here and we wanna make sure that everyone stays safe out on the water. So now let's take a ride along with one of our conservation officers. We are on Green River Lake today and we are gonna just be out on normal patrol our main goal today is going to be to enforce public safety laws and make sure everybody stays safe. We want the sportsmen and women of Kentucky to enjoy the waters, but we want to make sure they get to go home tonight. So we're going to be enforcing life jacket violations, riding in dangerous positions. If we come across any fishermen, we'll check a fishing license or two while we're out here. And also BUI enforcement for anybody that may be operating a vessel under the influence of alcohol. So those are the type of things that we'll be looking for today. This boat is showing an expired registration. So we're gonna see if their registration's current. Maybe they just haven't put it on there. We'll go ahead and do a boat inspection while we're here, make sure the operator seems to be sober and all that good stuff. And we'll just see what we got once we get up here. Hey guys, how are you all today? Good, how about you guys? Good. I'm off serving fish and wildlife. I'm gonna pull over next to you real quick. The reason I'm stopping you is I don't see any registration on this side. Is there? I didn't know we had to have one. I'm, got, I'm from where, is this a Florida boat? It is. Okay, I got your registration. You got your proof of registration with you? While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and do a boat inspection as well. That's fine, that's fine. If That'd I could good. see a uh, life jacket for you two, a wearable life jacket. I see all of it laying right there in the back. When we pull up for a boat inspection, this is what we are looking for. Every boat has to be equipped with a wearable PFD for everybody on board. And if your boat is 16 foot or longer, it also has to be equipped with a Type 4 PFD, a throwable device. You also have to have a fire extinguisher if you have a gasoline motor. It's good, and you also have to have a sounding device, whether that be a horn or a whistle. Whistle's here. Good deal, guys. Y'all got everything you're supposed to have. I'm gonna push off, and y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day, okay? That was a Florida boat, so that's the reason they didn't have any registration on one side, because state of Florida, you only had to have registration on one side of your boat. However, that is, you know, enough for a stop. He did have it registered as he was supposed to have, so there's no violations. So there's two guys fishing off this boat over here. We'll go ahead and check their fishing license in their creel, see if they've got any fish on board. Hey guys, how are you all today? Good, how are you? Good. I'm off serving fish and wildlife. I'm gonna pull up there next to you. Right ahead, brother. Y'all catching any fish? Just seen one. Did you? Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you, sir. All right, that's it. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, sir. That's it. 
But can we take a look in y'all's live well while we're here? Don't mind a bit in the world. Awesome. Y'all do some musky fishing too? Yes, sir. Is that what y'all are after today? Yeah, I mean, they're fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, good deal, guys. I hope y'all have a great evening. Catch a bunch of fish. So we got to check fishing license right here. Everybody was compliant, super friendly, and uh, no fish yet, but you know, maybe they'll get on later this evening. A lot of times I get asked, what does a conservation officer do? And I think a lot of people don't understand it's because there's so few of us. But just so everybody knows, a conservation officer, we have full enforcement power, just like any other police officer in the state. We do have a specific mission set. Our main mission is to go out and to enforce hunting, fishing, and boating violations. However, while we're doing that, if we run across anything else, whether it be drugs or anything, we certainly have that authority to enforce those regulations, and we do that. We're in a day and time where you can't just go out and work hunting, fishing, and boating and not expect to run into something else, because it's everywhere. Somebody set some noodles out here, attempting to catch some catfish. By law, you gotta have your customer ID number off your fishing license on here. So we're gonna pull up, make sure it's properly documented, and we'll go from there. And they've got it on there. We can actually run that customer ID number through our system and make sure whoever set these noodles has a current fishing license. So this is a legal noodle. I'll, uh, Throw that back in the water and we'll go out here and get a count on them. Make sure they don't have more than their 50 that's allowed to have by law. It looks like they got 49. They are compliant and good to go. There's a couple kayakers over here. I'll go over and check on them. Hey guys, y'all doing all right today? Good. Good. I'm all serving fish and wildlife. Y'all have any luck? Gotcha. He's at least 12 inches, so he's good. Y'all got a fishing license handy? All right, thank you, sir. All right. All right, thank you, sir. All right. And what about you, man? I don't have it on me. You don't have it on you? No. He gave me his name and date of birth, so I did call it in and ensured that he did have a current 2019 fishing license. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that you do actually have to have your fishing license on your person, and you can be issued a citation for that. The individual day was issued a courtesy warning. So you've got a life jacket, you got a life jacket. Everybody's got life jackets, so I appreciate that. I think a lot of times I see kayakers out on the water and they don't understand or they don't know the law about having to have a life jacket with them. It is a vessel, it is on the water, and by law, you do have to have a life jacket with you in the boat. Well, guys, I'm gonna push you off. Y'all be safe. Enjoy the rest of y'all's evening, okay? Hey, guys, how are you all today? Good, I'm off serving with Fish and Wildlife. I'm gonna pull up here next to you real quick. Thanks, guys. How you fellas doing? I'm doing great. Hey man, first time stopping you, you're showing a expired registration sticker up in the front. I know this is a rental boat. It's a rental oh, boat. Oh yeah. I noticed that once I once I stopped you. So I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna do a boat inspection real quick, make sure y'all got everything you're supposed to have. All right. If I could drive you're the operator, so if you could just get me a life jacket for everybody on board and just hand them out. Y'all sit down, just let him hand them out. There you go, buddy. You got a throw cushion, like a square throw cushion. Square right there. All right, the fire extinguisher. Make sure it's good. Feel great. Yeah, it's good. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. And a horn or whistle, something makes a noise. So you got a whistle right here. I mean, I see some alcohol, some flask. How many of you had to drink today? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. So as conservation officers, you know, we do wear many hats. We get to check a lot of people fishing, hunting, boating. We want people to be able to come out here and enjoy the outdoors. That's what our job is, is to make sure that everybody stays safe. And whenever people make poor decisions, they put other people in danger, then we have the job to do, whether that to be issue a citation or make an arrest.
here today at Giz Creek Lake with Easton Copley. And uh, Easton, you fish along quite a bit, don't you? A lot, yes sir. So we're at the boat ramp today and you're gonna demonstrate how to safely launch a boat by yourself. That's right. It's always fun to fish with somebody, mm -hmm. but you know, if you wanna go fishing and everybody else has got something else going on, there's no reason you can't yep. do it Sometimes by you don't have an option. It's either yeah. don't fish or fish by yourself. Let's walk through all the process of launching a boat by yourself. So okay. you've got your boat parked up, not on the ramp. That's right. So you want to stop at an area where you got flat ground so that you can do a quick inspection of the boat and make sure that your boat is ready to go. Right. Tell me a few things you got to look for. Well, the first thing I'm going to do always is go back and put the plug in. Yeah. That's the most important thing. <laughs> um, after I check the plug, I'm going to take my two back straps off. I'm going to leave the front strap tied on. After I take the straps off, take the motor tater off, I'm going to lay it in the truck. I'm going to go through and, and check all my electronic stuff. I'm going to make sure I've got power. And the last thing I want to do is get down here to the ramp have people waiting on me and I'm trying to get the boat started or trying to make sure that my electronics are gonna turn on. And if you need to prime your bulb before you start it, that's something you can do before you even pull down here. And once you back down and get close to the water, you wanna get out and loosen your strap. And then you're gonna get in and back the rest of the way in. And once the boat floats, you can put it in park and get out and either start it and pull it off or push it off. One of the things too is a life jacket. Mm -hmm. So when you get down here, you got slick ramps. Getting in and getting out of your boat is when you're most likely to fall in. That's right. And have your ropes ready to go because in this situation, there are courtesy ramps here. That's right. So if you have ropes on the deck of the boat ready to go, when you pull up to the courtesy ramp, you can quickly tie off. Yep. Or if you don't have a courtesy ramp, a place where you can pull up and tie your boat off quickly because if you're doing it by yourself, the entire time you're doing that, your truck's sitting right here. Your boat and trailer is blocking everyone else. So yep. we want to make sure that we get it done quickly, but safely. Yep. Once you get used to it, it's really not hard. You know, you really can't speed the process up by going faster or steer faster. Nope. It's all about being prepped and ready to go, yep. launch your boat, and just being courteous to everyone yep. else. What you do up there is going to make or break everything that you do down here. Well, thanks for walking through that with mm -hmm. me and good luck fishing today. I appreciate it, I hope it works out. <laughs>
and uh, got a little piece of property here. We've been hearing a lot of birds, and we are going to make our way calling and try to set up in a location in a blind that's right where we think the birds have been roosting. So we've got about a half a mile hike. We're going to take our time, call and set up a few times between now and there, and hopefully we get there before the birds do. We haven't been seeing any birds in this location, so we're gonna pack up and make our way to the blind. So we set this blind up here right on this gas line. These birds have been using this almost like a highway. It's a perfect ambush location. Here's our bird. I can't describe how many turkeys there were around us. We'd seen so many hens walk by. We just had kind of lost a little bit of faith that the, there was actually gonna be a, a mature bird in this area. And lo and behold, looked out, had already set my gun down, picked it up, and had to try to get off a shot really, really fast. We we're gonna put some meat in the freezer, but it was a lot different this year, it really was waiting them out. Getting in an area where you think the birds are traveling took a lot of patience, but we got it done. Hey, if you're willing to get up early and get out on the water, Lake Cumberland is a perfect place in the summertime to catch stripers. This morning we're here on beautiful Lake Cumberland with Captain Jeff Bardroff. We're going after one of my favorite fish to put on a plate, the striper. Throw your cooler up here, Chad. Yeah. I just got a couple drinks in there and some ice. Well, thanks for having us out. Thanks for coming out. Oh, this ought to be a blast. Oh, I've been wanting to get a, a nice early start. What is your favorite way to catch these uh, stripers? I prefer casting for them, which I don't get to do very much now since I got it. But. Yeah, yeah. Let's get some lines in the water and see if we can get some fish in the boat. This isn't a circle hook, it's a kale hook, right? I do have some circle hooks, some kale hooks. Okay. And what, what size is that? That's a two out. Okay. Tell me what that, the purpose of that little tab on there that is. Little, that little tab's to keep these bait from foul hooking. I like going right through the nostrils with them. And this is gonna be one that goes on the side there, Chad. Look at that bait. It looks beautiful. Today you've got, you've got a mixture of planter boards and down lines. I so do. Got six down lines. And 10 boards will run today. Let's so get my speed right. I'd like to be about 0 0.8 miles per hour right now. That's going to be important. Oh, now we got, now we got one. Uh-oh. Now this, that's a striper. This is probably a striper oh. right here. Hey, when it, when it starts to rain, it pours, huh? It's, today it's pouring fish. <laughs> That's a good thing. First, first striper bite of the day. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's one in Nice. The That's nice. why we came out here right there. All right. Now, these, okay. fish, these fish need to be 22 inches, right? And you're allowed two per person. That's right. And this fish here, what do you think we're looking at? Uh, we're looking at 28. Let's, let's say, go, let's let's say 26, 28. I think you're probably right on it. You know it better than me. It's 29 and a half. 29 and a half. Fantastic. We will take it. Very nice. Let's see if we can do it again. Let's do it. 
What's your what's the biggest one you've seen? 38 is the biggest that's been on my boat. Okay. I'm trying to break that 40 inch mark. Maybe we can do it today. Uh-oh, fish on, fish on. There we go. Guess what rod that is. Uh-oh, yeah, it sure is. <laughs> You know, it's funny. It's funny, because you said when you came out here, you've been trying your best to retire this rod, but it's always the one that goes it, off. It is. It's turning the boat, Chad. <laughs> what have we got here? Taking the whole board and going. There he is, upside down. You've got him tired now. Wore him down. It's a pretty good fish. It's the reason you come down here to catch him right there. Yeah, it's almost like the exact same fish. About the same year, same class, isn't it? Sure is. So Jeff, you said a couple years ago you hooked your very first striper and from there it was over. You uh, couldn't get enough time on the water, huh? No, I, I didn't even land them. I just hooked them. It was <laughs> just a fight to the boat. Um, I lost them right at the boat. I was by myself and it was kind of hard to net a fish by yourself. Oh yeah. Especially when you're new yeah. and you're pumped up and the adrenaline's flowing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's 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 been my obsession since that first fish. Oh, here we go, here we go. You got one down? down oh, rod. yeah, we got a down rod here. Oh, wow, look at that pole. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what have you got there? Oh. <laughs> hey, this is how you got hooked the first time, that isn't is. it? That <laughs> is. Oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. There we go. These down lines, I, he's about the same size about fish, same I tell size, you, but yeah. that fight was a lot different on the down line. <laughs> I looked over, then you go, here we go, and the rod tip was literally in the water. A good way in the water. <laughs> he's a hard fighting fish to be 24 inches. That's what that fish is, 24, 24 inches? 24 inch fish. Fish on. There you go. Does it feel like it is a striper? Yeah, it's a striper. I don't know if it's gonna be a 30 plus inch striper, but we'll be okay. That thing's getting bigger, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. Come on up here, buddy. Hey, that might be the best fish of the day right there. Be close to that 29 inch range, yeah. I believe. We're done. We are done. We have caught our limit. That's two each over 22 inches. And we got uh, we got a couple pushing 30 inches. I'm nice say nice job, another man. Another 29, 30 inch fish there, maybe. 29 and a half. It's a good fish right there now. There we go. Well, I'll tell you what, when fish bite like that, we can make it in for breakfast. That's right. <laughs> you know, you come out and you catch your limit, and that's the thing, you know, you got a two fish limit. We got our four fish really fast and uh, back to the dock. But I know, I, I tell you what, the good thing for you is your morning starts really, really early when you're doing this. What time did you get up and start getting back today? It was about 1.50 when I got up. I had my alarm set for two o'clock. That's why, you know, it costs a little bit of money to have a guide because you're gonna have bait when you get down here and you're gonna have the latest fishing report. And uh, you know, that it's worth it. How about some eggs and biscuits? Let's go get that them. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, thanks again. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's a really hard fighting fish by Mike Delaney. This is a 10 pound hybrid that was caught on Barren River. Nice fish. Here we have a nice channel catfish caught by Favia Goins, who's 11 years old. Congratulations. Here's a really nice largemouth bass caught by Tiffany High School. This fish was caught in a private farm pond in Nelson County. Nice fish. Gavin Hughes knows how to get out there and catch those hard to reach bass. He caught this fish out of a kayak on Laurel Lake. Nice job. Check out this really impressive buck that was taken in Jefferson County, Kentucky with the Thompson Center Encore. Nice job. Here's a buck that's full grown. This is a really big Owen County, non-typical buck taken by Matt Brock. Nice buck. Here we have a really impressive largemouth bass that was caught out of Elkhorn Creek by A.C. Parton. He was fishing with his son and they're from Kenton County, Kentucky. Nice job. Here we have Michael Woosley of Beach Grove, Kentucky, who's 11 years old, holding a nice largemouth bass. Nice fish. 
Riley Merriman caught this channel cat fish. It was so big she needed some help to hold it from her dad. This fish was caught at the Campbell County Sportsman Club. Nice job. Here we have six-year-old Kennedy Crouch with her first ear, a nice four-point buck that was taken in Bath County. Congratulations. Check out this nice buck with an impressive 21-inch inside spread that was taken in velvet by Daniel Caldwell. This was his first buck with a bow. Congratulations. Our fall hunting seasons will be here in Kentucky before you know it. Now's a good time to go online and take the hunter safety course. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.